Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley. This is part of a crash course on Framer, a tool for designing and prototyping projects. On this video, we're going to learn how to add animations to your projects. This is the fun stuff. On Framer, almost every layer can be animated and multiple properties can be animated at once. You can then continue to define the curve, time, delay, and many more custom animation options. Pretty cool stuff. Let's get started. Okay, let's just start by making an easy animation. I have a simple file with an icon in the middle. Let's animate this. To be able to animate, remember that you have to create a target on the layers panel. So here, I have this one selected and you see that I already created a target to this group. Our animation is going to look something like this. Pretty cool, right? Let's see that again. But let's build it from scratch. So I'm going to delete all of this code and I'm going to start from the beginning. There are many ways you can start adding an animation to your layer. One of them is by just start writing the layer's name. For example, here is a square. And then put a dot and then animate. This function will allow you to start adding an animation to it. Then I'm going to go to the next line. I'm going to press staff. And now I can see all the different properties that I can change for this layer. So I'm going to change the scale and I'm going to change the scale to 1.75. And you see, as soon as I put the code, the animation put, was put here. So let's reload that by pressing Command R. There you go, that's really simple, right? Another really easy way to add an animation is by using autocode. Whenever you start adding an animation, you're going to see this little icon here. If you press it, you're going to see autocode here. Here, out of code, you see all the properties that you can change, and you can just change it manually. So, for example, I just changed the scale, so it's also reflected here. Let's add a shadow. So, I'm going to add a shadow. I'm going to press here. I'm going to make a black shadow, and I'm going to change the opacity to 20%. And then I'm also going to add a lot of blur, super blurry. And then I'm going to change the Y position of it to probably 40 pixels. There you go, I added a really nice and soft shadow. Now I'm going to press Command R to reload the animation and see it again. Look at that, how cool is that? If I want to edit any of the parameters, I can do it here in the code. For example, instead of 40, let's say that it goes all the way to 60 and it goes a little bit lower, or I can go back to autocode and then change it there. For example, I'm going to add a little bit of rotation. So I'm going to put five degrees of rotation. And now let's reload the animation. There you go, now it rotates too. How cool is that? It's super smooth, right? Something else that you can change is the easing curve. You go here on the auto code, and then you press here on the second tab. And then here you're going to see all the options for the easing curve. So you can see easing, ease out, easing and out, or you can even add a spring animation. So let's change it to spring and see how it looks. <laughs> Look at that. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. And now it bounces really nice. When I'm in the curve tab, you're going to see that a new control appears here. This way, you can just re-see the animation and loop it over and over again until you get it just right. Or you can just stop it if you think it's too annoying. Notice that the curve options were added to the code here too. They're added as options, and then the time and the curve are added in another tab. Whenever I'm ready, I can just go back to the code and I can just edit any of these parameters manually. Let's see that animation again by pressing Command R. <laughs> Super cool. This is a little bit more advanced, but let's add an event that triggers this animation. Right now, the animation just starts randomly out of nowhere. So let's add a tap event that actually triggers it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of the code. I'm going to add another line and I'm going to say square on tap. And then I'm going to add a dash in a chevron. And then I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to press a tap. And that way the animation is going to be triggered on the tap event. Let's try it out. Look at that. I press command R and then only until I tap, the animation starts. We're going to learn about events in more detail later, but I thought it was cool for you to just learn how to add a tap event really quick and easy. 
When you create an animation, there are additional options that you can also edit. For example, time, curve, delay, and repeat. Here, I created a file where all of these different circles, all of these have the same animation. They all move to the Y position at 80 pixels. Let's try it out. They all do the same thing, right? Let's do it again, let's reload. You see, they all move at the same time and they all fall in the same position. But now I'm going to make a difference with options. Here on this one, I'm going to add options. And then on the options, I'm going to change the time of it. And instead of one second, which is the default, I'm going to say that it lasts two seconds. So now let's try it. Now this one is a little bit slower because I changed the time to be two seconds. Now let's change the one on, on the second one to be a different curve. So I'm going to go to options, add options, and then a tab, and then I'm going to say a curve. And then here, I'm going to change the curve to spring. Let's test it. And now you see that the curve changed to a spring instead of just an ease animation. Now let's change this one so it has a delay. I'm going to go to options again, and then a tab, and I'm going to say delay. Delay, and I'm going to say that it's delayed by half a second. I press, it's delayed, and then the animation starts. Now I'm going to add a repetition to this animation. This one, the same options, and I'm going to say repeat, and I'm going to say that it repeats three times. It's going to be a little bit annoying. Let's see it repeats and it repeats three times and then it stops pretty cool stuff